even growing, I know when we'd walk along the roads, going along, we knew um, if we went to the shops uh, that we had to go to the non-white area, the, the, the designated non-white thing. Um, it was sort of part of us. I didn't, growing up, it was just I knew where to go to. I didn't, I didn't question it. South African apartheid was a system devised to oppress people of color. People were divided into three main groups, whites, blacks, and coloreds. The restrictive system prevented people of color from developing economically, educationally, and socially. Political groups like the African National Congress were developed and played a big part in fighting the apartheid government. Leaders with strong influence rose to power and inspired many during the fight against apartheid, including Nelson Mandela and Steve Biko. The system was one that encouraged separation and promoted hate amongst the people of South Africa. It was one that will have a long-lasting effect on the country and world, but will serve as a valuable example of what happens when people focus on what separates them rather than what unifies them. The Dutch, and then the British, had long since occupied South Africa, though without much structure. This changed, however, on May 31, 1910, when four British colonies united under one name. These colonies, the Cape, Natal, Transvaal, and Orange River colonies, made up the newly named Union of South Africa. This constitutional monarchy would serve as a strong, resourceful power in Africa for the British until 1961, when it was dissolved. After that, it became known as the Republic of South Africa. The Native Lands Act of 1913 was another prime example of the white minority South African government achieving spatial segregation through disposition of land. The act stated that anyone who identified as a native was prohibited from buying over 93% of South African land. In 1950, it was required by the Population Registration Act that all South Africans be classified into three categories based on their race. The three categories were the blacks, whites, and coloreds which included Indians and Asians. These groups were created to further promote separation and increase the social and economic gaps that already existed between people of different skin tones. For example, a person could not be considered white if one of his or her parents were non-white. Also, all blacks were required to carry passbooks with their fingerprints, a photo, and information on access to non-black areas. The Department of Home Affairs was responsible for these classifications and the continued separation of races. Our policy is one which is called by an Afrikaans word apartheid. And I'm afraid that has been misunderstood so often. It could just as easily and perhaps much better be described as a policy of good neighborliness. Accepting that there are differences between people. But while these differences exist, and you have to acknowledge them, at the same time, you can live together, aid one another, but that it can best be done when you act as good neighbors always do. Outside the municipal offices in Sharpville, South Africa, a crowd of 5,000 men, women, and children protested peacefully. The protest was against the past laws, which restricted and hindered their movements in white areas. It is not clear why the police opened fire, but by the end of the protest, 69 were left dead and 180 were injured. No police officers were charged. This event sparked controversy and outrage. The first shot hit me. It hit you right here. Abram Mafoking still has a bullet lodged in his spine. What were you thinking? 
We were all in fear. We were good. There was no time to think. We were just trying to escape. In my grade 11, when we, I was initially now made where I heard and I started realizing that, no, this is not right. We shouldn't be treated this way. We started our first riots. The Soweto Uprising on June 16, 1976, was a student-led protest organized in resistance to the separate but very unequal education standards in South Africa. On that day in June, more than 7,000 students were set to meet in Orlando Stadium, all protesting the Bantu Education Act. This act mandated the learning of Afrikaans and English for all Native Africans as a means for assimilation. Before reaching the stadium, students were showered with tear gas and then live ammunition. It is estimated that 700 students were killed by the police. Because my parents had grown up in this situation, um, they had actually said to me that I was not allowed to join the riots. So my mom would know that I was in the riots because when I'd get home, she'd see that I was very sunburned mm -hmm. and she threatened me that she's going to belt me for joining the riots. So what I used to do, I used to sneak an umbrella into my bag mm -hmm. because I wanted to join this, 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 this mm -hmm. rally, mm -hmm. it was, mm -hmm. it was, and um, I'd sneak an umbrella and I'd sit and we'd sing, um, we'd freedom sing songs. freedom songs and I'd sit with my umbrella. So when I got home, I'd say to my mother, no, I went to school, I was at school the whole day. Nelson Mandela and other South African political leaders were on trial for treason from 1956 to 1960. In December of 1956, the South African government arrested 156 political leaders. They were charged with high treason, which can lead to the death penalty. The government thought that they were trying to overthrow the South African government with violence. Nelson Mandela was arrested and spent 27 years in prison. In 1990, Nelson Mandela's sentence of life in prison was revoked and he was finally released after 27 long years. Uh, the minority white rule of, at the day, end of the day, uh, realized a change had to come about because South Africa was sitting on a time bomb. Mm -hmm. Had he not been released at that point in time, I think he would have seen a different picture uh, pan out. Uh, folk were, were like, determined to, to gain equality at all costs. And you can imagine what would have prevailed had that been, because I don't know, just a total destruction. Celebration broke out on the streets everywhere around the globe. The world's eyes had been on South Africa, and finally, there was a victory that everyone could participate in. In 1994, Nelson Mandela ran for president in the first democratic election. He won and remained president for five years. He gained national popularity and was a powerful figure nationwide. Music was a driving force during the apartheid era. It was an efficient way that people could communicate their political ideas and beliefs.